Hello, Anson Griffin here again with another YouTube tutorial in MATLAB. Today we're looking at a fairly simple uh, physics example, and that's modeling the motion of a falling tennis ball. Uh, I decided to give the key credit. I got the program, the idea from this book here, from the Springer there. And the aim here is to model the flight of a falling tennis ball from height using a of theoretical data. And there are the objectives. So we need to calculate the height, the position, the velocity, the acceleration versus time. And then at the end, do uh, the convert values with the theoretical values to get a, a sum squared error value. So I've published the data uh, as a PDF. I'm just going to do it that way. So we have the table of contents there. Once again, just to gratefully acknowledge the IP content comes from here. And sorry about that. Okay, so, so we're going to read in a text file called Tennis Ball file tennis ball dot text and we can see here that just went on a little funny there at the beginning the first column is the time and the second column is the height okay. and you can see there we're going at didn't come out just quite right but we're going every millisecond one by ten to the minus three two by ten to the minus three three by ten to the minus three and there's two and a half thousand readings Might look at here a second. Um, this is your general equation for the height. So it's your initial position, which is a half gt squared. Velocity, dy dt. So if you here to rearrange one into three, differentiate this guy. Why not? When it's a half gt squared. So that guy slots in there. Differentiate a constant goes and differentiate minus a half gt squared. You get minus gt, I assume you can do basic calculus. So we tidy up as before. We load uh, tennis ball dot text. I think I called this something slightly different up above, but it doesn't matter. And uh, just there's two columns. Column one is the time, and remember that zero. 1 by 10 to the minus 3, 2 by 10 to the minus 3 in seconds, and y is the height of the ball. So release it. How are we going to do the, the velocity? Well, we're going to do it this way. We're going to, the current, so the i plus 1, so wherever we are, the, the, the next height minus the current height over delta t. And remember, delta t is going to be constant because we're taking a snapshot every millisecond. So the length of y is the length of the observation, so that's 2,500. Your delta t is constant. That's We just took it as t2 minus t1. And then on this line here, we get the velocity and the diff of y. So it's going to do 2 minus, sorry, so now y2 minus y1, y3 minus y2, y4 minus y3, y5 minus y4, etc., etc. y2500 minus y2499 over delta t, and delta t is constant, uh, which is every millisecond. So we end up with d there. So if we have two and a half thousand readings, t and y. But then V is going to be 2,499 because you're doing differences, so you'll end up with one less. And then to get the acceleration, as I've noted in the comments above, you normally do the diff, the diff of Y. So you get the diff of Y, that'll be the differences, that will give you the velocity. And then the diff of that again will give you the acceleration. And normally you'd say the diff of the diff of t, but remember the diff of t is going to be uh, one millisecond, and if you do the diff of that, that's always going to be zero. 
So you end up with a funny answer. So that's what I was trying to get at there. The diff of the diff of t would be zero. You can't divide by zero. So we're just going to just leave it as dt there. Okay, we do three subplots. So we're going to create a placeholder, three rows, one column, into slot one, do the plot of t and y, that's uh, time and height. Suitable labels there for y label and x label, and suitable title as well. Uh, here, uh, three rows, one column, position two. Now, just be careful here. Remember V, that's the last, that is 2,499. So we're only going to go from time one to 2,499. And how do we do that? Then remember N was 2,500. So N minus one is 2,499. Suitable labels again. Acceleration. Now remember the acceleration will be 2498. So we're only going from t to 2498. So we say n minus 2 there. Where the graph, where the snap of the graph is where the mouse is there. Suitable so labels. There's the first plot heaving interview. There's the height of the ball. Scratch you get an SMS each time. There's the velocity of the ball is zero. Remember it's falling and the velocity is minus. Hits the ground, jumps up, hits the ground, jumps up, hits the ground, jumps up, etc. Now the acceleration here, just be careful here. That looks like zero. We'll look at this in a second. And then, not quite zero, we'll see this in a minute. But when it hits the ground, remember the velocity changes from minus to plus. So then you'll get a big spike in the acceleration. And likewise, sorry about that. Likewise here, the velocity changes there, so you're going to get a spike in the acceleration. The velocity changes here, they're going to get a spike in the acceleration. Now, if we just do the first half second uh, for the acceleration, we'll see the graph better. So we're finding the index max. So find, we'll find the time at the indexes. Sorry, find in the indexes where the time is less than a half. So it's going to go 0, 0 0.0, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4, etc. 0 .44, 0 .498, 0 .499. So we'll find the index to them. And then we're going to plot 2 to that index max and the acceleration to 2 to index max. So let's scroll down here a little bit. Don't, just don't be fooled here. See here, when MATLAB does this by 10 to the minus 3, so it's very small. So even though the acceleration looks like, well, it all depends which way you're looking at it, it looks like it's increasing. But for the first half second, it may look like it's climbing a lot, but really this is minus 9 by 10 to the minus 3. So it's very small. It does start to go up a little bit, but really it's... Not zero, but it's approaching zero. Now we're going to get the mathematical model, which we mentioned above. I won't run over those graphs again. So this is the theoretical. Now remember, we're not taking into account here air, air resistance. So we go badly wrong, like the error propagation will go horrible. So we're only going to go for the first half second to try and minimize the errors. We define our constants, 9.8, the initial height is 1.6, velocity, and then we get the, the relevant uh, yt's there as well.
the y tilde will be the height at the various times. And the dot power 2, remember we want 0 squared, 0 0.001 squared, 0 0.002 squared, 0 0.003 squared. So you have the dot power is each individual element squared. Now if you are very new to MATLAB, you, know, you might be confused between the dot power and the power, but it's, if it's each individual element, it's dot power squared. We do a plot, one to IMAX for T and one to IMAX for Y, and we're using red. And then for the theoretical values here, YT, which we calculated up here, we're using blue markers. We put in suitable X labels, legends, titles, etc. Oh, sorry, nearly forgot to hold on. We've done one plot there. So the hold on keeps that graph uh, locked in. So when we do the next plot, we get the second plot overlaid on the first plot. And then when we're done there, we release the whole, so the plot, you know, we release that graph. So we put on the relevant X table, Y labels. And then we're good to go for the next plot for the velocities. One plot, keep the same plot in focus by using hold on. Do the second plot for the velocities. There we are. So that's the height. You can see the observed and the experimental are very close. And then as we go on, you can just about see a bit of divergence down there. And if you went on and on and on, the gap will get quite large or quite big. Same thing for the velocity there. And then we'd like to get some sort of error metric. And the one I chose today was the sum squared error. And we're getting the sum squared error for the first half second. If you did it for the whole thing, it'd be massive. So the error is the observed minus the expected, and then you want to square it. So there's a lot of brackets here. That's the observed. Sorry, that didn't quite work for me. Let's try again. So that's the observed minus the expected. I meant to be the other way around, but it doesn't matter because we're going to square it and each individual element squared dot power two. And then we add them all up. We get a value. And then I did an F print F there and I did it to six decimal places. And we found that the sum squared error was 0.554521. Okay, I hope that helps and thanks very much for listening.